So, Mr. Lavin, with that being said, you're up. <laughs> All right, so um, I don't know what I can tell you about the cafeteria except that uh, I'll answer any questions you have. The one issue I do want to kind of push out there is there's a company called PayPans. I don't, you've probably heard about it. Some of you probably already use it. It is, in my opinion, a parent's best friend. I have two students in the system as well. I use it. Um, PayPams is a third-party company. I'm not pushing this company because I, have, I get kickbacks, because we don't. <laughs> it's just uh, you can put money into their lunch account if they need to have money or if you want them to be able to get extra food uh, without having to send cash in with them that gets lost, potentially, you never know, um, or a check, or you can just put it on electronically. You can access the account to see how much they have left um, on their account. You can see what they're getting daily because it itemizes it. Um, and you can ask them, how come you're getting a chocolate cake every day? And then you can ask me, how come they're getting chocolate cake every day? Uh, and we can work things out. Um, a good example was today, while we were doing this, a teacher came in with some students' money and just put it down at the cash register. There you go, walked away. This is something I'm trying to prevent from happening. Um, I hate seeing money just left around because you never know, you know, David's here, he might just, you know, wander <laughs> off with it. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Trying to prevent things like this, and the easiest way is just, you know, don't send money. Just put it on electronically and stay with care of it. Um, and it's paypams.com. Uh, the only thing you need is your student ID number, or the, your student's student ID number, um, to do that. It doesn't cost any extra money. There's no fees for you um, to do that. If uh, teachers or Mr. Tolsky, he has a fee that he would have to pay every time he puts money in. Um, but for the students, we don't. The other thing, also, you can set up alerts. Yes. It'll alert you if your balance gets low. Yes. Yeah, it'll say it'll send you an email when it gets below a certain amount, and you can set that amount ten dollars, five dollars, fifteen, whatever it is. Yes. If we have, if we want to restrict our child from being allowed to have certain things or amount a week or something, what's the easiest way to tell you to communicate that? Because you can't do that online, right? Right. Um, PayPams is a separate system from our cash register in this, so. Um, the easiest way to restrict what your child is getting, number one, is train them. You know, because we can't force them to do anything, you know, we want them to make good choices and all that. Um, but we can put a note, for example, into the cash register system so that when their account comes, they put their PIN number in, their account comes up on the screen in the cash register and it'll say, you know, one extra on Friday only, or, you know, no chocolate, or whatever it is. Um, so the best way would be either call me or email me, um, and, and we'll fix it. Probably email is better that way. I've got a paper trail. And we can find your email online? Yes, I can give it to you now, too, if you want. It's uh, The phone number for the cafeteria directly here is 980-343-1210. Again, the name is Eric, L-A-V-I-N. And the email address is E-R-I-C, number one dot L-A-V-I-N at CMSK12 and C.US. Okay? Um, you, know, you can always come in, talk, whatever. Um, but that's probably the easiest way. Now, did you, did you mention about cash versus check? Okay. Yeah, ca cash and check, you know, if you, bring, if you send it in, they're the same to us. It goes into the cash register we put it in, gets on the account immediately. When you do PayPams, it will take, it's a bank transaction, so it will take, you know, a night or a day and a half, whatever, to get in, because it has to download overnight and all that fun stuff. But that doesn't mean your child won't be able to eat. Um, it just means they can't get a la carte items until the money shows in the account. So they will get a full lunch still. Yes. Um, they just can't buy that extra bag of chips or that ice cream or things of that nature. So it's never going to be a situation where a child's not going to get food. Right. I'll give, I'll give you a, a, an example. I've been at East Mac High School the last three years. Of course, I live here in Cornelius, so my commute is much better now. Um, but in high school, you know, student doesn't have money. Hey, too bad, so sad. You know, sorry, kid, you know. And, you know, we would make exceptions for them. But you know what? They're high school kids. Come on. Um, elementary school kids, it's not their fault. It's yours as parents. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're going to feed them. You know, the law says we can't prevent them from eating. And we're not going to, um, but like Mr. G said, you know, we're we're not going to let them get the chips and extra this and extra that. They'll get a full meal, and a full meal at lunchtime is five components. There's a milk component, 
there's a, a bread or grain component, which could be, you know, for example, the breading on chicken nuggets can count towards that, or a roll, whatever it is that's on the menu. There's a, a protein, uh, or meat or meat alternative is what they call it. So cheese or chicken or you know, whatever the protein is. Um, what I do, milk, uh, grain, protein, uh, vegetables, and fruit. Okay, so that's the five components. That's what they can get as a full meal. So they can come in here and get, let's just say, a cheeseburger, broccoli, uh, strawberries, milk, and what am I missing? Oh, the grain is in the hamburger. Okay, so there's their five components, so they get a full meal. They can get two vegetables with no extra charge. Okay, the only requirement for it to count as a meal is that they have to have a fruit or a vegetable. Okay, we're trying to push the, the good stuff for these guys. Um, so, trying to encourage them to, to get their vegetables, and then they get to the fruit section and the desserts and everything after. Um, we're trying to limit to what we put out as far as the junk food. Uh, and, you know, I know this was you know, an issue for some parents coming to the school when I came in this year that, uh, you know, how come we're serving chips? How come we're doing this? How come we're doing that? Uh, because they're not healthy items. Well, you know, this is the real world. This is a business as well, and we have to, you know, we have to make some money, so we have to sell things. Do we push them? No. Okay? It's an option for these kids if you want them to spend money. Okay? But again, it comes back to parents need to train their kids. You know, you can have this or you can't have this. And there are ways, as we talked about before, to restrict that access. Okay? You call me or send me an email. Hey, I don't want my kid buying chips. Okay? No chips for this kid. No problem. Okay? Allergies, that's going to be something where if your student has, you know, doctor uh, 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 verified allergies, you fill out a diet order form, it goes to our child nutrition nutritionist, they enter it in the system, the nurse knows, we know, um, and that will restrict certain things that they're going to get, and it will say it on the cash register as well when their account comes up, but the student still is going to need to know what they're allowed to get. Okay? Because, um, like I said, what, 1,100 students here? Not a <laughs> Okay, so um, when you do a diet order, you'll get a menu, okay, that will show you highlighted what he can or can't have or she, okay? Um, so we try and make it as easy and straightforward as possible. It always comes back to train your student, train your parent, or your, your child. Um, but we're here to support that. So you're saying that you don't turn away kids if they don't have any money in their account. Correct. You'll allow them to get a lunch or a drink or whatever it is that they're there to get? They, they, the only thing, if they have no money or if they have a negative balance, the only thing they can get is what qualifies as a reimbursable meal. Because the federal government will reimburse us for that meal. Okay. So that means at lunch, the most they can get is those five components. They can't get an extra bottle of water or a bag of chips or a cupcake or an ice cream because those are all extra a la carte items. But we'll give them basic nutrition. Does that make sense? So if my daughter has 15 cents in and she, didn't, she forgets to drink that day, she can't get a water? Technically, no. And how is that acceptable? Because that's an a la carte item and it costs cash. So okay, you're if she. To make money and that's why you turn it away for a drink? I can't give it away. Okay, it's. Everything that's back there is paid, including my salary, is paid for by federal money. Okay, I can't give away something, federal money, for nothing. Okay? The rules for child nutrition, okay? The rules for. The rules for child nutrition are that we can't debit those sorts of things. We can debit a regular lunch to make sure that this child is getting basic nutrition, okay? Anything other than that, we can't. We're not allowed to, okay? So if she comes in and she forgot her, you know, her, her drink, you know, that's one of those deals where it's an exception, maybe. You know, maybe there's a way that I can say, you know what, I know your mom, uh, I'll take care of it this time and I'll send mom an email and say, but again, 1,100 students, you know, I can't do that and have it not get paid for if mom says, you know what, no, I didn't want her to have a water. We'll pay for that. And we'll also allow them, you know, there's a water fountain out, so that will allow them to get water there. And we have cups. You do know that the fifth graders are no longer allowed to go to the restroom and use it during while they're in the cafeteria. They got, they got their privilege taken away even with the um, bathroom passes. 
Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that they're taking advantage of it. I mean, I think in situations like that, we're going to let it happen. You know, if you have a round, I mean, you have a situation where kids are going 20 at a time to the restroom. Yeah, you do have an issue. Yeah, but and in that situation, if I'm in here and I know Miss Miss Hackett's in here, if we have a child that doesn't have a drink, I'll give him a cup of water. Yeah. So I mean, we'll deal with that. And those are those are few and far between, so we'll deal with that. Yeah, this is about taking care of the kids, not being you know hardcore about no, you know, but. So how do you deal with the parents who maybe have just tried to bust the system and it's just not putting money in the hotel or sending money in and they're going to allow their, their child to get lunch every day? How do you... Well, and this is where it comes down to us as a community, okay? From our perspective here, the kid, the student is going to eat because we're not going to refuse them food and prevent them from eating. So they're going to get, again, the basic nutrition, okay? we will debit that student's account. So then they go negative or more negative or whatever it is. The parent is responsible for making sure they pay that. So that balance, as long as they're within the CMS system, that balance will travel with that student to whatever school they go to. Um, so when they get to the end of high school and they want to get their diploma and they owe $150, that school is going to say, uh, I have your diploma, but uh, okay. Now, when those balances don't get paid, Child nutrition can't pay them because, again, it goes back to the federal money. Federal money can't be used for that purpose. So it goes to the school board, and the school board has to pay off those debts to child nutrition to repay the, the funds, which is you know, taking money away from classrooms, away from whatever. So you know, it comes back to parent responsibility, student responsibility. And we also, at our level, though we don't have that kind of power in regard to the diploma piece, right. um, but we also send voicemails to parents and say, you know, you're, you owe X amount of dollars and things of that nature. So uh, you will see, well, you won't see, but we do see a list. And you would be surprised at the amount of money some people are able to accumulate. Uh, so we do notify those families that they owe money. Uh, but the reality is some of them probably won't pay until they get to the end. Uh, most do, but there's always going to be some that take advantage of the system. And this is nationwide. I mean, it's, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in different school systems. And, you know, of course, the bigger the school system is, the more money you're talking about. But Any other questions for Mr. Lapp? I, I just want to say, um, I used to never eat here. And I'll give you credit. I, I had your, what was it again, the chicken fajitas? Yes. And they were awesome. I mean, I actually liked it. So I'll give her, I'll give Mr. Levine credit. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take all it the smelled good and tasty. <laughs> well, and it, just to give you a little background about me, you know, I've been, you know, fine dining restaurants to pizza shops to whatever. I'm doing school food service because I have kids and the hours are great. Okay, I've been doing this. This is my fourth year, fifth year, fourth year. Um, so, you know, my training is from a customer service. You know, make a plate and make it perfect serve you, charge you, whatever it is, you know, a nice restaurant. And what I'm trying to do here is get everybody here, not just, you know, we'll make cafeteria food, because the product that we get in the back door, of course, you know, it all goes out to bid, CMS gets the cheapest half the time product. Um, and so the product that we're starting with when it comes in the back door is not the greatest. I mean, nutritionally, it's good basic nutrition, okay? Um, so I'm, I'm trying to get us to take care of the food right, not overcook it, because then a hot, uh, hamburger is not a hamburger, it's a hockey puck. Um, you know, make the, the food right with the right recipes, follow them so that they smell good and taste good, as David said. Um, and so we, I think we've been moving in the right direction with that, hopefully. Um, but if you have any questions, you know, feel free. I'm always here, so. So does that mean that the menu is what the menu is for every wide. elementary school has the same menu. You might take it to make it a little bit better here, no. like taste-wise? No, just make no. sure that it's uh, the proper uh, ingredients, uh, amounts, I'll, I'll and give you, cooked properly. Yeah, I'll give so you an example. The okay. chicken fajitas before, different tasting? Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll give you an example. The chicken fajita recipe that he's talking about, okay, there's, um, you know, for the number of servings you're going to make, it's going to say this much chicken, this much onion, this much green pepper, this much garlic, whatever it is, okay? Well, some people will say, you know what, I'm too, I don't have the time to make all this you know, onion and pepper, so I'm just going to cut one up instead of five pounds. That dramatically changes the smell and the taste. 
So the day that he was here, I was training my cook and said, look, I'll chop, you know, chop up some onions, here's some peppers. This is how much it's supposed to go in. We put it in and he came and said, what's that smell? Something smells great, you know. And that's, that's the difference, okay? Um, at East Mac, my big thing was, you know, like this morning, we had chicken biscuits um, or hamburgers or the same type of thing or chicken sandwiches, whatever. You cook them in the oven, if they stay in there for too long, they're going to be rubbery or hard hockey pucks, and who wants that? So I'm trying to get them to pay more attention to having them cooked, because you have to hit a certain temperature legally. Um, cook them just to that temperature, not way over that temperature, because then you're affecting the quality of the product. Okay? It's it's not like it's overcooking a lobster. Well, it's still lobster. If you overcook one of these hamburgers, it's chew leather. So. Those are the kinds of differences. It's the same in every school, but it's kind of a focus yeah, on, yeah. yeah. Anything else? Anyone? Anyone? You <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just want to uh, thank Mr. Lavin for coming. Um, he's the first cafeteria manager that's ever spoken, so thank you very much for that. He's also uh, participated with our school leadership team quite a bit in regard to our healthy initiative. So, uh, he's actually taking a, a really proactive approach of trying to get involved with our parents and what we're trying to do. Um, I just want to wish everybody a, a nice holiday season. You know, Thanksgiving is is quickly jumped on us, uh, and you know it's going to be Christmas time before we know it. So I just hope everybody has a wonderful holidays, and I will see everyone very soon. So thank you for coming. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.